Back now at 7.30 with the sobering news that the six construction workers who fell into the Patapsco River during yesterday's key bridge collapse in Baltimore are now presumed dead. And this morning, crews officially starting the task of recovering their bodies. And our Fox 5 Jacqueline Matter, she is live near the key bridge in Baltimore this morning with the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, to offer more insight into yesterday's event. Jacqueline. Good morning, Steve. Marissa, that's right. We're here with NTSB Chair Jennifer Hammondy. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 5 DC. You all are fully investigating what happened on the key bridge now. Talk to me a little bit about that May Day call. Governor Westmore saying that call in the early morning hours yesterday from the crew on the dolly truly saved lives. But we know that that ship was only going, what, eight knots, so truly not all that fast. Uh, we know that call made it to many people. Traffic was stopped, but it did not make it to the construction workers. Do you know why? What's the latest on that? Uh, well, that is something that we will look at today. Mm -hmm. uh, the NTSB is very meticulous in our work, and so we will use uh, the data recorders and recordings from 911 and any other sort of uh, electronic recording that we can find to begin to build a timeline of what occurred uh, from the moment uh, the vessel left the port up until when it struck the bridge and any potential uh, mayday calls or evacuations. But uh, that is something we still have to determine in building that timeline and hope to have that later today. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some maritime safety precautions here. From my understanding, some experts that we have spoken to at Fox 5, maritime experts say that usually there's about five whistles, if you will, that typically would go off in some sort of emergency situation like this. Do we know if those went off to notify people other than that May Day call? Or was anything else put into place? That is exactly the type of thing that we're going to put in that timeline to okay. figure out any sort of mayday calls, any sort of uh, sounds, whistles, you name it, uh, that will be part of the timeline. And we, we do uh, marry that with uh, the data recordings that we have to make sure it's factual, and we'll hope to release that later. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the pilots on board. Is that something, I, I mean, how do they decide, I know that's protocol, but mm -hmm. what does that look like when they they are uh, taking part in some of the um, formations to come out of the harbor, the port of Baltimore here. What is the pilot's role in something like that, and how does that play into the investigation? Yeah, well, for this one, we still have to determine what everyone was doing, what uh, uh, pilots were doing, what the vessel was doing, who was maybe monitoring, uh, how many people were on board. It's still something we want to confirm, uh, and that is part of what we're doing today. So our focus right now, because this takes so long, is to get all the perishable evidence. Yes, we're going to identify who we need to speak with. We will begin, hopefully, our interviews today mm -hmm. with folks on the vessel, others that were part of uh, rescue operations, uh, to begin to build that fuller timeline. Uh, but right now, it's about getting the perishable evidence, because once everything is cleaned up, we don't have that information anymore. So we need to get any sort of electronics, any sort of documents. We need to take pictures, document photographs, and also get our highway team on the vessel to begin to look at the structure. Okay. Uh, so there, that is the focus now. All of that related to what the pilots are doing or any sort of communications that will come later on down the line. Okay. You talk about boarding the vessel. We know that that took several hours before any communication on that part and, and talking to those folks. What uh, was that because it was an international ship that it took a little bit longer, or was that just uh, oh, for typical? The yes, for the Coast Guard to, to board the ship and talk to them. Is I'd that... have I'd have to defer that to okay. the Coast Guard. We did have a small team on board. Uh, I understand last night. Uh, beginning to look at the vessel, but it was late, dark. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to hopefully board later today, both with the marine safety team and our highway safety team, and begin to get a look. Can you put into perspective something like that size of a ship hitting the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Can you give us a comparison, if you can at all? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can give you any fair comparison. Uh, for this, everything is uh, unique. Uh, but for this, I mean, it's a massive ship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a 95,000 gross ton uh, commercial uh, container ship. Uh, and it's a major highway. It's a major structure. And uh, it just must have been uh, truly devastating for everybody involved. And, of course, now 
uh, with uh, re recovery operations. Mm -hmm. We just really feel for the families at the NTSB. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, look, we always learn in, in times like these, in times of tragedy. What does this speak to towards the infrastructure to make things safer moving forward? Yeah, so that's the whole role of the NTSB. Safety is our sole mission in saving lives. And so at the end of our investigation, and because why we are so thorough is to get to here, it, uh, our goal is to issue safety recommendations at any point during the investigation that would prevent this from reoccurring. But it requires then implementing those recommendations. So we work very hard afterwards to do that. Uh, but our hope is that we can prevent a ne the next disaster from occurring. What does the timeline look like uh, for gathering all of this information, having a full report here of what went wrong during this crash? Yeah, this is going to take some time, and it's multimodal. It's highway and marine safety, and it's a pretty devastating event. Uh, so we're going to collect a lot of information. Uh, we have a really great team and a lot of experts, but uh, we'll probably be on scene maybe five to ten days, okay. uh, our folks, and then we'll issue a preliminary report within two to four weeks with factual information. The entire investigation could take 12 to 24 months, okay. but we do not wait. Uh, as part of any investigation to issue urgent safety recommendations to anyone. If we feel there is a safety deficiency or something needs uh, to occur, whether it's here or nationally, we won't hesitate. We will issue that urgent safety recommendation at any time, and we will not wait till the end. Okay, and, and one more question for you. I know sometimes in situations like this with such large vessels, there's sometimes uh, tugboats that follow along mm -hmm. with them through the port to get them safely out of the harbor. That did not seem to be the case here in this incident. Do we know why is that typical out of the port of Baltimore, uh, or is that still something that is going to be investigated? That'll issues? be part of our investigation as okay. well, but great questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Appreciate Thank it. You. And TSB Chair Jennifer Hammondy joining us here on Fox 5. Steve, Marissa, I'm going to send it back into you guys. All right.